Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's video has to do with how you connect lightning uh, arresters and how do you handle uh, the lightning arrestor or the protection of control cables. A control cable might be a cable going up to a uh, up to a rotator and uh, it's got several cables like for example uh, to my uh, step IR big IR there is a control two control cables actually with four wires each for a total of uh, eight wires that need to be protected surge protected okay so first let's look at regular lightning protectors this is a picture from um, DX engineering of the TT3G50 which is the standard lightning arrestor that you might get for your coax cable they've got uh, two coax uh, connectors here. These are both SO239s. You can get them with just about anything. Uh, I get them with the SO239s. And then there is this, this is a solid block of, of metal with uh, uh, cavities drilled out for where things go. The actual uh, lightning, uh, the thing that, that arrests the lightning is goes down inside. This is a technically a surge protector from Alpha Delta. These run maybe oh, 60 bucks a piece. And you need one for every antenna lead that you've got going into the house. This should be the last thing the antenna cable sees before it goes into the house. Okay, and these are outside. They're not inside. So this is a threaded rod that threads into this little thing right here. This is one quarter inch by 20. So in a pinch, you can use some cheap aluminum rods from uh, Home Depot, but best to have a stainless steel rod. If you can't get a stainless steel rod like this, what you can do is take a regular um, threaded nut okay like this and then put this on it here and screw it all the way down to here put this on it and down to here screw this into the hole there and then this nut this extra nut you can screw down tight the fact that this has this extra top of here doesn't matter don't try to take that off because it'll screw up the threads right there and you'll have a heck of a time getting a nut on or off of that but they do screw up tight like this now let me show you how these are used okay we're going to look at something from the actual alpha delta uh, website okay these are the arresters that we looked at and you'll notice here is a copper plate this copper plate comes here over to here and another copper plate comes here on the back and when you put these in here it squeezes the copper plate real hard so that you have a good connection there and then you put that bolt which by the way is stainless steel uh, from this which is stainless steel up against it now you can put in here between this some um, copper current carrying type of uh, uh, joint sealant that you can pick up at the hardware store. It's conducting copper, it's incorporated copper, and it's a conducting grease. And that'll go in there, and then that'll make sure that that connection stays good. Um, this one shows four for four wires. These, this is SO239. Uh, looks like these are end connectors. Okay, and then here's your ground rod. So these are right at the ground rod. This is the ground rod piece that goes up into the shack and so on. Okay, here's another way of doing it. Uh, you can buy these bars online. And this is connecting your, your ground wire. Um, this is the one that goes to your 
uh, let's see. This is the one that goes into the shack. This is the one that goes to your ground rod. And this one right here uh, can go over to bond with your utility ground. Note that they're screwed in this way. You have to get it to back in order to unscrew it. A problem with that, of course, is that you have to disconnect this from the wall to get at the nut to do that. However, what this does is it leaves this round thing right here out where you can get at it. These are only thumb tightened and when you untighten them what you get inside is the actual little gas tube that is the spark that will cut across and short out uh, the uh, nasty current spike you're getting. Okay. Another way you can do that is to put these in uh, to a box you can buy these boxes. DX Engineering uh, has them. Other people have them. There are a variety of different types of these, but this is a box that can be closed and makes things much neater. And here you have uh, one of those uh, Alpha Delta, and I think this is a polyphaser. And this is something else again. And then this right here is brings us to the change in subject, which is how we work with the uh, control cables. In this case, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 control cables. Now, what's inside the lightning arrestor is a small gas tube with some points here. And if the voltage is too high, it arcs over in there and thus sending the energy from that to ground. This arc has only got 3 to 30 volts in it once it is established and so that will protect your your radio and it is self-resetting. The thing is designed so that if it is too much arc it will fail closed so if it fails closed you know to replace these little things. They're seven or eight dollars for the little uh, glass tubes that go in there. Now I want to move on and work on, on this thing right here. Um, this is the DXEIS RCT and this is what is inside of the one that I have from um, Step IR. There are eight wires. Okay, now what do we have here? For each of the eight wires we have this blue disc which is a surge protector. Okay, now the voltage on these wires is fairly low. In my case, it's like 33, 35 volts. Okay, so it's not huge. And then the little capacitor takes care of the very high frequency components of this. Okay, and then these are all wired together to this which is mounted to the mast, which is presumably grounded, okay, or it's connected to something that is grounded. Now, something I want to show you on this, this is real important, and that is that when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these wires, you don't come into here and out there. That's not how it works. You bring your wire out here, and put a ring on it. The ring goes around that and the nut goes down on it. And then another ring comes like this and goes under that same nut. Okay, because this is connected to ground through the surge protector. Okay, and the same here. The wire that's going here goes here, goes like that on and so on and you have that all the way down. So actually an eight terminal device handles eight wires and makes this thing uh, work for you. Now to really do this neatly um, on here you're going to almost want to wire it one wire at a time. Take a piece of wire, connect the two uh, 
the circular rings to it. Uh, screw them down under here, okay. And then your next wire, about a half an inch or so there, it's a little bit more, and put those under there and so on. You can make it look very neat. Or you can make it look like a mess, but whatever works. What you do not want to have is a wire that comes out of here and goes to the antenna. <coughs> Excuse me, Callum. It goes to the antenna because what happens then? What happens then if it's too close, you'll get the arcing from the antenna so you want to run your wires out about here and then each one comes in and dips in for this thing right here and this is mounted this way <coughs> it's mounted this way and if you get any water in here if you start getting water in here Drill about an eighth of an inch hole down here and then mount it like that so that holes at the bottom. And what that will do is allow for the pressure equalization in and out so that it doesn't condense and you don't get water in there. Okay, it's going to stay humid however you do it. All right, so there you have it. This uh, particular video was motivated by a question from uh, Daniel Chin. Uh, and he is 9 Mike 6 Delta Charlie and he is in Sabah Malaysia okay and so he is uh, protecting his uh, towers and stuff like that he's got most everything right I just wanted to add a little bit about how to connect these because it does no good to put in a light this needs to be attached firmly to ground that whole box okay this box here is plastic but this back plate right here see the metal plate in here is connected to ground see the thick strap you can put a strap on take the strap out the back down to your uh, ground rod okay similar it shows it here um, and if you have lightning arresters uh, like this it does no good to simply insert them. It's not going to help you at all. This or this must be very securely grounded. Okay. And it's worth every couple years going out and double checking these, redressing them, whatever you have to do. One last thing that I want to mention is that these are stainless steel. So you can get an anti-galling compound that you can put in there so that these will come apart fairly easily. Because when you put stainless steel together, stainless steel is a little softer than other metals and you'll get a, when you tighten them up, they tend to flow just a titch into each other. It's called galling. And you try and undo them and you end up snapping it off or something like that. So be careful with these things. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this, I would ask you to join me and my channel by subscribing, clicking like, and sharing this video with others. If you would like to support the channel financially, you certainly may do so by going to decastler.com support and looking for a way there that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.